Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 21st T Tuesday Update. Let's get into it. Um, this period of time is, is I'm dedicated to working on uh, uh, the scientific paper, the research, the writing of the paper for the 2019 Artificial Life Conference, which is coming up this summer. Uh, uh, so most of the hours of this week, the working hours, were spent on that, and that's also going to be true for the next couple of weeks, uh, uh, probably, uh, depending on whether the A-Life Program Committee uh, does extend the deadline, which, if you're watching... Uh, um, but, uh, so I'm going to talk mostly about uh, updates on the bill of material stuff and the 3D printing stuff, which we kind of left hanging last time. Uh, um, and uh, also, hopefully, there'll be time to talk a little bit about some uh, software improvements that I've developed, because there's nothing like actually eating your own dog food to decide, maybe you want to cook the dog food a little bit more. So, let's try to get into it. Uh, um, in the bill of materials uh, that we looked at this last week, the green lines are stuff that we have uh, at least enough parts to build 150 tiles. The second column is green. We have enough to build 200. Uh, I've added four more rows, 14 through 17, which have a lot of red in them. However, those are uh, components H1 through H16 which are nuts and bolts and screws and standoffs and spacers and all that sort of thing that we do not need in order to send the boards off to ETS, to Electronics Technical Services, to have them manufactured. So uh, we will need the parts eventually, uh, um, and uh, we'll talk about the tri trials and tribulations trying to uh, acquire some of them uh, right now. Uh, uh, so... I put two orders in uh, on AliExpress uh, uh, on February 14th, on Valentine's Day, both in the same uh, 12 o'clock hour, uh, uh, one for uh, 800 uh, nuts uh, to go on to screw these things onto the bottom, and one for 800 of these brass uh, uh, spacers, 12-millimeter uh, brass spacers, because that's a pretty good height to set the beagle bone green above the uh, circuit board. Now, we don't really need these spacers and screws and nuts for mechanical strength because the beagle bone has 96 pins that are friction fit into the female headers, and really that's not going anywhere. But if at least if we believe pe some people on the internet who are talking about the grounding system of the beagle bones not being that great through the pins, and that we're saying that uh, if you did use the uh, mounting holes, which are connected to ground, and you use metal... Uh, mounts, then you can improve the ground. So we're doing it on that basis, uh, at least officially. So the uh, nuts uh, that we got, uh, uh, we ordered, uh, and the uh, spacers, we still have to order the, the screws that will go on the other end, haven't done that yet. Uh, they were ordered from two different places on AliExpress, uh, uh, both on, like I said, in the same hour, watch what happens. So the uh, the first one, the nuts, uh, uh, I get a, whoops, I get a confirmation uh, the very next day, uh, February 15th. Um, uh, the uh, the screws, the standoffs, uh, I do not get a confirmation for four more days, February 19th. So that sounds bad for the screws. On the other hand, after February 19th, it's uh, February 20th and February 21, that's last Wednesday and Thursday, coming across the date line, get to have them, uh, get to have Wednesday twice. Uh, um, and two days later, here they are, they arrive on Thursday and, and and here they are uh, uh, 800 of these m3 12 millimeter standoffs uh, to work with now uh, uh, this was the one that was supposedly shipped four days after the first one so where are the nuts well that's a question uh, uh, in fact uh, the they even though the vendor claimed they were shipped on the 15th, DHL tracking did not pick them up until February 21, last Thursday. In fact, the same day that the ones that were ordered at the same time arrived. And where are they? Are they getting picked up in, in Hong Kong? Uh, apparently, no. Apparently, they're getting picked up in Dubai. <laughs> Uh, um, and actually, they, they haven't even been picked up. It's just the shipment information received last Thursday. And so, in fact, uh, they don't actually get picked up until this past Saturday. Uh, and they still appear to be in Dubai. I mean, 
I, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether this is, is messed up or whether, you know, there were just a whole lot of extra nuts in Dubai, so the guy is just selling them from there, or what? Uh, um, I hope I get a bag of nuts for this. Uh, um, and so they sat around uh, Dubai on Saturday, uh, and on Sunday uh, they went to uh, Bahrain, uh, uh, and on Monday they went from there to Leipzig, <laughs> and uh, also I, they went from Leipzig to Brussels, uh, uh, and now, as far as I know, today, Tuesday, uh, they are in Cincinnati. Um and in fact, they're they're taking a, a little scenic tour around Cincinnati. Uh, I don't know uh, if it had been any kind of normal uh, DHL experience. You know, once they hit America, I get them the next day. So we'll see if this package, whatever it is, uh, uh, arrives uh, tomorrow. Uh, but uh, I am not impressed. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the guys that sent me the brass standoffs, they're great. I already uh, went and ordered, uh, made another order with them. And in particular, I found out that they have, uh, you know, so the, the cases that I've been making, you know, I, I've been countersinking th the corner holes because all I could really come up with was 25 millimeter socket cap screws, but the cases really need 28 millimeters, so I, I made a countersink of three millimeters, but that's kind of hard to print because it's upside down and so forth. And the same place that I got the brass standoffs that did such a nice job have 28 millimeter uh, M3 socket cap screws. So the, I've made an order for those and I'm gonna revise uh, modulo 3D printing. Uh, uh, the case once again to not have the countersink and just let the uh let the screws sit up on top uh of the uh the case in a again you know a little bit more of an industrial look so that's good um so right so there that is and in fact uh this is ost hardware we like them uh, Kevin screw store not so much uh, uh we'll see how it goes so that's the bill of materials stuff uh, that will fill in uh, H1 through 4 and H5 through 8 once they come in and H13 to 16 once the uh, 28 millimeter socket caps come in. Uh, um, so making progress, but there's a whole nother problem, which is uh, uh, I'm going to save you the, the <laughs> blow by blow. But the, the short bottom line is, is that I'm still negotiating with for Yukon uh, uh, with uh, the person, my account executive or something, I don't know who, what it is, uh, about the lead time for these parts for the for the uh, inner tile connector parts, the six that go around it. And then in particular, for the, the two uh, female headers that the beagle bones themselves go into that Adafruit really can't provide enough and it's a very high price. For Yukon is saying 35 business days uh, uh, lead time to get these things delivered to me. That is the middle of April and these things are needed for the ETS build. So if that number holds, if we end up having to go that way, that means we cannot go to assembling the circuit boards until the middle of April, which I really do not like. And I'm hoping to see if uh, there was some questions, if I didn't buy a certain part that this would take longer and if I ship it a different way, it might go faster. So that's still in progress. We'll see more information about that tomorrow. All right, um, so 3D printing. We ended last week uh, with the 3D printing uh, printer uh, down, completely clogged, unable to extrude any filament. Uh, last week we had had a prob we had some problems with first layer stuff, which I had mostly fixed by uh, increasing the um, the temperature on the first layer seemed to help, uh, and then we had had the uh, and then we got better looking first layers, and then we had had this problem where we got to the bottom of the first spool, and I'm like, ooh, I have an i3 Mark III, it can handle this, it has a filament out sensor, it'll all be fine. It was not fine. Uh, uh, here it is, the end of the spool going into the uh, into the printhead, uh, um, and the thing telling me to press the knob to unload the filament, which I did, and then pull the filament out, which of course I can't do because it went into the print head uh, um, and 
so uh, then it pretended to be loading it and so forth. The whole thing was completely clocked. So uh, I got a little bit out the first time and then it just wedged up solid. So that was terrible. And, you know, I really do not know that much about uh, 3D printers. I, I bought them assembled. I tried to be ignorant. I tried to be hands off. And really, the state of the art in 3D printing still, it's made a tremendous amount of progress since a couple of years when I first started trying to do this. But still, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, as soon as anything goes wrong, all of this, you know, easy, it, you know, it's, it's like, if your car uh, broke down a lot more often than it did and you were supposed to fix it yourself so uh, uh, so you know time to start looking at the instructions about the different possible fixes uh, uh, Andrew Walpole uh, clogged nozzle cliffhanger love it yeah it's easy for you <laughs> Of it. Uh, um, I've never gotten a cold pull to work, he says. I always manage the clog with a piece of high E guitar string. Try going up through the nozzle opening. And it's like, well, you know, hey, a high E guitar string? I can get a high E guitar string. Uh, uh, so I went to the guitar center. And I'm always a little scared of these kind of places because, you know, like the musicians are always like so cool and I'm like such a loser. Uh, uh, but here I am getting ready to go in and, you know, I want to buy by a high E string <laughs> and uh, you know I walk in uh, there's a, a guy there who you know says hi as if I'm somebody uh, uh, but then it turns out like he's like the repair guy he's not actually the friendly guy that'll help me so when I ask for some help from him that doesn't work and so forth uh, uh, and I'm all completely cat I was gonna take pictures inside and then I was like completely Rrr. and by the end of it you know I really felt like like that the the repair guy was like Jack Black from High Fidelity the movie if you've ever seen it and, and I was like the fuddy duddy dad going into their record store and at any minute you know he was going to say uh, uh go to the mall <laughs> <laughs> that I, I'm not cool enough to buy stuff there. But instead, what actually happened is I went in for a high E string and I came out with a complete set of strings. Not just a complete set of strings, a complete set of the next to the most expensive strings because <laughs> that's what the guy helped me to buy. Which is fine, whatever. They weren't that much. They were, you know, 15, 14 bucks. I don't remember. Uh, uh, but the more that I looked at them with this treated strings and I was reading the instructions and, and like they actually have a coating on them like that, it's really super thin it's not even clear whether it's kind of a homeopathic coating but uh, uh, I was like maybe I don't really want to be sticking this coating up in the hot uh, hot uh, plastic and say well you know well I actually have a guitar I have a, a, a old uh, guitar an old Takamine uh, uh, and when I say old I, I mean really old uh, uh, that's a uh, uh, July 1978 old Takamini, uh, um, that has uh, strings that on it that are not that old, uh, but they're not treated with any kind of whatever. So I figure okay, I'll take the high E string off of my Takamina. I'll put the one that I just got on there. The Takamina will get a new set of strings and I'll get something that wasn't coated. And it still works. Uh, and so coated versus treated. So there it is. So there's the new string. So in fact, that's what I did. I took the high E off my guitar. Uh, uh, this is a piece of it. Uh, this is from, you know, unwrapping from the stem and I took another piece and so forth. A and I raised the print head up. Uh, I preheated it for PLA because that's what they told me to do in the instructions when it got there. Uh, um, I went fishing. Uh, uh, I got the thing up there and I kind of probed around and wiggled it and whatever. Uh, um, it kind of twisted but you know it bent a little bit but well, I could still kind of feed stuff up uh, um, and uh, then I tried to load it again nothing no movement at all well there was one more thing to try and in the in the Prusa uh, suggestions you need a thick wire not one that'll fit inside the nozzle but a 1.5 millimeter wire that you can go down from the top and try to push the stuff down through rather than pull it up from the bottom to do that you need to actually disassemble part way the thing which I knew was going to be horrible uh, uh, oh yeah and I discovered it had a cool down mode in the preheat section I never knew that before so yeah, so here's the fails, here's the things to work on it. In order to try the wire, the stiff 1.5 millimeter wire, you gotta remove the extruder cover and remove the filament sensor with all these instructions, which of course I skipped because I got it assembled. Uh, um, 
but here I go. Uh, the uh, the uh, the Mark III apparently uses pretty much the same screws that I'm using, the M3 socket caps. So my uh, cool little ball head uh, driver works for these things too, very nicely. Uh, I got the uh, filament sensor off. <coughs> um, I wasn't sure that this little tube was supposed to come with it, but it did. Uh, uh, I opened up the extruder covers. Sorry for the bad pictures, and and there it is. And indeed, I opened this up. I'd never seen the inside of this thing before it's got all kinds of shredded pla because it was trying to drive the plastic down and it couldn't because the damn thing was jammed up uh, um i these are my new wires uh, so this is funny so like when you're going up the bottom you use the high e if you want to go down from the top and you need a 1.5 millimeter string that's very close to the low e so i just took the low e off my guitar and uh since i was going to change them all anyway and i took some pieces of that to go uh working from the top down uh, uh they say heated up to 250 that's 250 degrees centigrade that's pretty hot uh, um and there it is you can see me uh got the wire coming down here it's going through and into the hole and i was i was pushing it pretty hard no it's not moving at all uh, uh there's a thing so now what uh, uh just in desperation now that i had the whole thing open i, I figured i'd f fit the high east <laughs> up the bottom and see if I could do anything and in fact uh, there, there's my high E string coming up through the hole and going out through the next thing and in fact uh, I don't know if you you can see it. There's my high E string that's threaded all the way through the extruder now like a piece of floss. And so I flossed the thing. Uh, um, and oh my, uh, uh, don't know if you can see it, but there's a little piece of something that's starting to protrude from the top of the hole that you can get when you open up the extruder. Uh, I, uh, I got it with the needle nose pliers and here it is. This is the end of the spool. Uh, uh, that went down and disappeared and got jammed. I pulled it out. Uh, I reassembled stuff. I put it back together and lo and behold, I have extrusion. <laughs> uh, um, I, I calibrated the thing. I tried a, uh, I tried, first I tried the 7% solution blank. It worked well. I tried a, 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 a case. It did not work well. I tried cleaning harder. The second attempt at a case worked pretty good. And in fact, uh, it basically there's a beauty shot of a newly printed post clog case in fact you can see it doesn't have the countersunk uh, holes anymore this is designed for the 28 millimeter socket caps we survived uh, uh, the my first uh, extruder clog uh, uh, and uh, and then I finished uh, changing the strings and, and I noodled around on the guitar for the first time in the 21st century. I'm not sure. All right. Now, um, one last point. Uh, there's only, only got a minute or two left. Um, let me just talk about it quickly. I'm just going to let it, because it's, it's really a super nerdly thing anyway. Uh, one of the things you do with your programming in Splat is, you know, you would like to be able to declare type defs, names of other types. Uh, here, count is a shorthand for unsigned three, and then use them elsewhere. But when you do this, it doesn't actually work. And you get this weird uh, uh, error from the ULAM compiler. And the reason is, is that the way Splat works, all these different sections, the different rules, Rules and so forth are actually different classes. So the class where this type def was declared is not the same class where this rule is being compiled, and that's why it can't refer to count. But we have a new feature. Uh, um, where is it? Here. Uh, uh, in the uh, metadata section, in the top section under element or quark, you can now say local and then provide uh, ULAM uh, declarations, constants and declarations, uh, and then refer to them all through the subsequent file. This is taking advantage of the ULAM uh, local file scope feature. So this actually does compile. Very nice. Uh, uh, there's also a feature, I don't have time to go through it, called Scratch. Uh, uh, if, if you're interested in what it is, it allows you to uh, um, uh, well, 
get in touch. If, if you're, in fact, if you're programming in Spiderall or trying to program in Spiderall, get in touch anyway. Please, uh, I, I would love to know you're out there. Uh, and the both local and Scratch have already been pushed to my develop branch. Uh, uh, okay, that's it. Uh, um, it's still all about the writing. I still need you to keep me off the, the internet, uh, uh, undefined, and and uh, Mycon and a, and a couple of people, Louis D. Uh, uh, thank you for reminding me, asking me the question, why am I writing? That's it for now. Uh, uh, the next uh, episode will be one week from today. Thanks for watching. <laughs>